So we're here in Catalonia, Spain, and uh, Ezra, he's just brought his van down um, and we're gonna swap his battery out. He's got, at the moment, he's got um, normal lead acid batteries uh, and on the floor, that box you can see, is a brand new 200 amp hour lithium battery. So we're basically gonna upgrade his van from lead acid to lithium. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna like install it, we're gonna talk about the process, we're gonna analyze the pros and cons, and we're gonna really dig deep and work out is lithium iron worth it? Is it worth upgrading if your batteries have died? Uh, and if you're on a budget, is it still worth it? So we're gonna go through all this stuff. We're gonna show you how to install it, how it interacts with your charge controller. Um, yeah, and I hope that'll be useful. This content is sponsored by Outdoorsy. Through Outdoorsy, you can rent your camper van out to make extra cash, and you can rent a van to try van life before you commit. So this is Ezra. Hey. This is his van, which yeah. one day we'll see a tour of. Yeah, well, I even filmed one, <laughs> like six months ago, which I might edit and publish, you never know. <laughs> uh, so what's going on, Ez? Um, why are you changing your batteries and what's your problem been? Well, um, we went on a fir our first van trip for a good few months a week ago, um, and I realized my batteries are completely dead, <laughs> which is from the last couple of years, few years of use in that, I had AGM batteries and maybe I didn't have quite as much as I needed so I was constantly running them right down, right down, running them down to like 11.9, 11.8 on a regular basis, 11.5, 11.4 as time went on so I just, um, I ran them down too many times for too long and it killed them. Um, so A, I think I need a slightly bigger battery bank and B, based on the way I use my batteries, it'd be nice to have a battery that I can run down and not worry about. <laughs> so these things led me to the conclusion that maybe lithium iron was a good choice. So I did some research and I discovered a, four, a 200 amp hour lithium iron battery, um, which is effectively the same as 400 amp hours of AGM, which I currently have 230 amp hours of. So this should be nearly double as much and should be enough. <laughs> So we're going to change it and see. When you have a lead acid battery, you can only use half of its capacity. So if it's a 200 amp hour battery, you can only use 100 amp hours because when you go below that or when you run your battery right down, if you put it all the way down to zero, then you end up having like a strong chemical reaction in the battery, which basically destroys it. So you have to be really careful with lead acid batteries that you do not basically screw them up by running them down, which can be hard because if you're out and it's freezing cold, you're running your heater, or you need your electricity to keep going and you can't wait for the sun. You know, it's quite easy to kind of let that run all the way down, even if you just didn't really notice it. Now on charge controllers, there are systems which you can have, which will just turn your power off at a certain voltage and things like that, which is worth being aware of. But at the same time, if you are the sort of person who runs your battery down a lot, maybe lithium iron batteries are a good solution. So now the challenge is, well, A, the first thing is just getting my old batteries out because I basically, I built them in. <laughs> they went in. It's quite a small hole for yeah, the batteries. I bought these batteries because they fitted this space perfectly yeah it was kind of why I bought these ones um, but to get them in I had to slot them in and then kind of screw them in with some wood and then I install these other units around them so I'm I think probably half of these things are gonna have to come out just to be able to slide these batteries out and then we're gonna see if the new battery even fits in so I'll wait so first things first before I do that I'm gonna switch everything off actually there we go batteries disconnected <laughs> they've, all, they've got to have charged to, to, to hurt you <laughs> oh yeah true but Might be able to just take the top ones out and yank it off. Cool, so we've removed a couple of things. Now I'm going to disconnect the battery and see if we can start sliding them out. The batteries. It's alright to touch the red end, it is, isn't it? As long as you don't touch the black end. Yeah, for your batteries. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I keep forgetting they're dead. <laughs> Somehow I've never electrocuted myself with the batteries. Well. Yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah, it's I was good. like in weird positions trying to do stuff with them. This is literally like reverse Tetris or rush hour. <laughs> might have might have figured it out. We've, we've moved lots of things and slid one battery forward in the hope that this one is now gonna lift out. Ah, so close but not quite. Maybe if it goes. 
diagonal, and then now I'm just I'm just using brute force now. It's, it's gonna work. It's so close. Hey, that's the family show, though. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> I'm getting so sweaty in this box. Hey, <laughs> way. Supposed to sound like that? I guess so. Alright. Oh, old one's out. And not too much stuff destroyed in the process. Wow, so here it is. The lithium ion battery. It's actually massive. It's so much lighter than these two. It's kind of crazy. It's lighter than one of them, probably. So it's actually lighter than just one of these. And on top of that, this has almost double the, double the capacity of both of these. Um, so I guess the, the only drawback really is the, uh, the cost, because this was 1,000 euros. And these were, I believe, around 150 euros each. Um, and well, I guess in theory, I would need four of them to have the same capacity as this. So that's going to be 600 euros versus 1,000 euros to have a roughly similar capacity but obviously I would need four of these just to have the same capacity as this um, so this is much more convenient but then on top of that one of the main real advantages is that this will also last around three times as long as these so these were I mean used up within a couple of years but this should really last definitely over five years okay. I'm gonna catch some genuine reaction if this doesn't work out <laughs> I do not want to take a jigsaw to this hole it's not gonna fit. Look at it, there's so much stuff in the way. Oh! Family show Ezra. <laughs> well, <laughs> doesn't fit. <laughs> doesn't even, it's not even close to fitting. Well, it is, but then when it gets in, so much stuff is in the way. So this is the moment of truth where we find out if Nate's suggestion is gonna save me another half an hour of removing things from the electric box. Oh, f it's looking really promising. It's just it interfering on. Yeah, it's interfering on whatever that thing is on the fuse on the board. It's in. With lots of jiggery pokery. Um, just notice that all my positive wires don't reach the new positive terminal, which is a bit annoying. Why not? It's going to go to here. Oh, you could just put it the other way. Oh yeah. Okay. Take two, scrap that, none of that's going in. So yeah, I've just finished putting it all back together, or rebuilding it, or whatever. Old stuff out, new stuff in. Um, so, I'm going to try and turn it all back on now. <laughs> And set set it to charge properly. Um, when I was researching this, I found out. Well, I was I was wondering whether the current solar setup with solar charge control and everything was actually going to work. Switching to a lithium ion battery, and I discovered that my solar unit is actually way more versatile than I knew. I should have put in this initial groundwork and research when I first set this up uh, a couple of years ago because it might have meant my batteries actually lasted a little longer if I'd actually set my system up to charge to the specific voltage that those batteries wanted. But anyway, I've learned that I can set this to charge to the voltage that this wants, and so that's what I'm gonna try and do now. When I was, yeah, I was looking into lithium ion batteries and I was trying to um, figure out what voltage they charge at, etc., etc. and I learned that actually every lithium ion battery has its own voltage um, that it likes to charge at, and every lithium battery should also come with its own fact sheet that tells you exactly how to set it up for charging. So I have the sheet here for this particular one, um, and it tells me it likes to charge at 14.6 volts. So we're gonna try and set this unit up to charge this battery at that. Wow, cool. There is my battery, alive. So, try and remember this now. Control parameters. It's not that, but we'll change that. So this is password, you just skip that. Okay, sealed, no. User, that's what we want, we want user. And then we're gonna scroll to the next one. 200 amp hours is actually exactly what this is, so that's fine. 12 volt, that stays the same. Well, the battery is working, but the sun is not. 
There we go. Nice. We have solar. Amazing. Let's um, let's try the app. This batch, this batch has an app, which seemed like overkill, but let's try it. Huh. Cool. So here we can see battery's at 60%. It's currently charging. It's in perfect health, and there's its capacity. What's this? Temperature. <laughs> Ah, voltage, ampage, actually quite neat, even though we have everything right here already, so it's totally unnecessary but quite cool. <laughs> How does it feel to have a prospect of a van which has functional electrics? Weird actually, <laughs> like yeah, I feel like I've never quite had enough electric, even when, uh, even maybe at the start when probably technically I did have enough electric, I was still being careful and like, if I had to do a lot of laptop work in the day, I probably wouldn't want to use my heater the night before. And if it was going to be, and vice versa, if it was going to be a freezing night, I would try not to run my battery too low in the day. So hopefully now, just don't need to think about it anymore. It's amazing. So I think really the question of lithium and AGM for most people is just going to come down to price. Mm -hmm. Because if your other batteries for the same quantity would be like, probably between five and 600 euros and this one's a thousand euros mm -hmm. um, but it will last longer and I, I think actually when I did my van two years ago it was significantly more expensive the cost dynamic yeah. didn't make a sense I remember but... researching the same when I did mine it was more like two grand I think to get enough lithium at the time and now it's half the price yeah I think so and then and then then really you're like well I could just replace my battery five times I don't have to put down like two thousand euros Exactly. from the off exactly. um, but probably now um, if you've got the money mm -hmm. probably worth it um, it's gonna last much longer I think um, lithium-ion battery should last about 3,000 cycles whereas uh, lead acid might only last 300 to 500 cycles uh, so it's basically sort of equivalent between like 10 years and yeah three yeah, years yeah. or something like that so, totally so yeah they are they are a lot better if you've got the money and you can afford the outlay I would probably go for it if uh, if money's tight and you're just trying to get on the road then get on the road exactly and it'll be work out fine exactly exactly and also not only are they lighter but they also work at much more extreme temperatures than uh, lead acid or AGM batteries so they work I think right down to minus 20 they're totally fine for operating and charging and then right up to like plus 60 centigrade as well so um, if you're going to be somewhere super hot or somewhere super cold it could again be good to have a lithium ion battery cool well thank you for watching this video uh, as always we hope that they're useful and you know help you with your decisions help with your dreams of van life and we will see you next week I hope you enjoyed that video. If you hadn't noticed, we do sell an ebook for how to convert a van. It has over 190 pages of detailed instructions and diagrams, also 25 video tutorials which are specifically for the ebook buyer. Creating a van for many people is obviously a really intimidating project, but I really believe, and I've seen it time and time and time again, that with the right information, anyone can turn out with a pretty decent van conversion. So check the link in the description, subscribe to the channel if you are not already, uh, and drop us a comment if you like this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.